I'm SD, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can turn any long sleeve button down shirt into a short sleeve one. Why? Well, because sometimes you're a fan of wearing short sleeve button down shirts, but you can't find one that you actually like. Well, what if you were able to take the long sleeve button down shirt that you already have, that you like, that you are a big fan of, and just make those ones into short sleeve shirts. You can do that, it's actually really easy. It's one of the easier tutorials that we've done on this channel. I don't really like long intros though. Let's uh, let's do this. First things first, we gotta get our materials ready. We're gonna need a sewing machine, we're gonna need a measuring tape, we're gonna need some sewing pins, and we're gonna need uh, some uh, fabric scissors too. For the fabric scissors, make sure you don't just be going in your junk drawer in your house and grabbing a random pair of utility scissors that you use on everything. Because you're not gonna get a smooth cut. Trust me, I did that in the beginning. Don't do that. I got my dress shirt all ready to rock right here. Now the only thing we gotta figure out is, well, how long do we want this sleeve to be? Because if we put uh, our sleeve down here if it ends down here well that's gonna look pretty stupid that's gonna be really long isn't it well what happens if we put it up here same thing it's gonna be really stupid looking it's gonna be way too short so this is our shoulder seam running along right here well what's the perfect length for our uh, for our sleeve fear not SD's got your back what I did is I did all the hard work and all the leg work and all the measuring for you what we got right here is this is a short sleeve dress shirt that I picked up at Target on clearance for like $12. And the sleeve on this shirt is the perfect length. Oh, and if you're new, what I like to do on this channel is show guys like you how to tailor their own clothes at home. So if you're interested in that, be sure to click that subscribe button down below. So all we gotta do is transfer these measurements from this sleeve here to this sleeve down here. How do we do that? Well, let's grab our measuring tape and let's do just that. This is our shoulder seam right here. And this is the end of our sleeve right here. Well, look at the angle that they make. They end up making an angle like that. So we're not making a, what is this called? Like a, a rhombus or a, a parallelogram? Somebody help me out down in the comments. This would obviously be a perfect length or an even length for our sleeve. But since it goes like this, it's gonna be longer up here and it's gonna be shorter down here. How do we work around that? Well, I'm gonna show you. So what we're gonna do is we just have to measure from our dress shirt, our short sleeve dress shirt right up here. We gotta measure this measurement from the shoulder seam all the way down to the end of the sleeve. And what do we get? We get just about nine and a half inches. Now, you might be thinking that, okay, well, we gotta work around this, so do we have to, we have to work around this angle, so do we have to measure this part here, right in the middle, and do we have to measure the bottom? Well, no, we don't, because all we have to do now is transfer that exact measurement onto this sleeve down here. But hold on, hold on, don't get too far ahead of yourself, because see, here's what's going on. Yeah, this sleeve might be nine and a half inches long, but what do you got down here? This is the actual seam, or this is the stitch down here, but well look, it's got tucked under fabric down here, so that's gonna add some, uh, an additional measurement to uh, what we're working with, right? Yup, it is. So let's measure the end down here and see what we got. We have exactly one inch. So nine and a half inches from our shoulder seam all the way to the end of our sleeve here, and then we have an additional one inch for the folded up seam right under here for the folded up fabric down here. We're gonna be marking 10 and a half inches on our sleeve. What you wanna do is you wanna make sure everything is even. Make sure everything is all in place where it needs to be. I don't know why I'm making that voice. It's kind of weird. Hopefully I remember to edit that part out, but let's grab our measuring tape and let's do, bingo, nine and a half inches. But whoa, 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 what about that extra inch? Mm-hmm, we wanna add that. So we're gonna go down to 10 and a half inches because what we're going to do is this is where we're going to make our cut we're gonna fold it under and we're gonna stitch it up. Whoa, 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 hold on, hold on. You uh, you made sure to actually tailor your shirt first and uh, throw some darts in the back of it, right? No? Well, wait till the end of this video to uh, make sure to go ahead and do that because there is no point in taking the sleeves and cutting them off and making them look great on your arms if, well, if the body of your dress shirt just looks like a big old hefty bag on you. Well, what do we do now? We got our spot, we're ready to rock, we're good to go, right? Well, we need to make a line going right across 
across our shirt. Our angles are going, whoops, I kicked my light. Our angles are going like this. We wanna make sure that we have a perfect 90 degree angle right here. And I'm gonna take my measuring tape and you can eyeball this. You would be very surprised at how well the human eye is able to just identify a perfect angle. And I'm looking at this and I'm just saying, yep, that looks like a perfect 90 degree angle. If it doesn't, just adjust accordingly. Oh man, wait for it. And I'm gonna put a pin right down here. And then I'm gonna put a pin right at the bottom. Here's an optional step for you if you don't have sewing pins or you wanna just find another way to do this. Boom, look at that, Taylor's chalk. You can take a hard ruler like you would use in school or even a book or anything and you can just line it up right on the edge here and you can draw a line. Boom, look at that. Now I have another line that I can follow much easier with my scissors. If you don't have Taylor's chalk, don't worry. When I started tailoring my own clothes, I used to use my daughter's sidewalk chalk. Use what it is that you have. So since I already drew a line with my Taylor's chalk right here, I'm gonna remove these pins. If you don't have Taylor's chalk and you're using safety pins or you're using sewing pins, you can just keep them in there. Just cut right up close next to them, as close as you can. And we're gonna cut, whoa, 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 hang on, hang on. I'm gonna double check and I'm gonna ask you again. You're using fabric, hold on, right down here. You're using fabric scissors, right? Yeah? Okay, good. Whew, okay, good. For this edge right here, if you get it off just a smidgen, just a tad, if this line isn't perfect, do not sweat it because since we're tucking it under, we're able to hide our imperfections a bit. When we tuck it under, we can pull it tight it looks exactly like it would from the store minus the uh, minus the stitch here. Ooh, look at that, good. Flip our shirt inside out. So let's grab our measuring tape and let's measure one inch to compensate for, for the tuck, for the tuck under, the tuck rule. All right, so we got one inch right here. So this is where we want our fabric to be folded in. Kind of tuck it under just like that. So that's one inch. So this is where I want my edge to end. Line that up right there. I'm gonna grab another sewing pin and I'm gonna pin it in place like this. Now that that's being held there, I can remove this original one. So now let's do the same thing. Let's fold it all under and pin it. All right, we got it all pinned up and we are good to go. Goody, I don't even know what that means. We're good to go. Let's go, uh, let's go sew this bad boy. Uh, here we go with this again. Where's my utility ladder? Seriously, come on. All right, let's see, maybe it's upstairs. Nope, awesome. Yes, bingo, here we go. Ow. All right. So I've got my machine all ready to rock and roll. It is good to go. All I did was I slid the end of my shirt right on the end of my machine and your machine actually has a little attachment that comes off, it's removable, so that you can do things like hem jeans or you could fix your sleeves like we're doing in this tutorial. Now, when I pinned it up, I made sure that the pins were facing towards me in this direction so I can just pull them out, boop, just like that as I go along instead of having to like kind of fidget with it and pull it out that way and it's like, oh, that's annoying. I've got my machine set to make a straight stitch. Um, it's gonna be 2.5 millimeters, which is gonna be a standard stitch like you would find it in the store. We are using a universal needle right up here, that bad boy right there. We're using some polyester thread because it's gonna be able to flex. And also a quick pro tip that I don't know if a lot of people know about. See these lines right here? These are called your seam guide. When I'm sewing, I'm not going to be staring at my needle. I'm gonna be looking right here. I'm gonna do my darndest to make sure that the edge of my shirt is lined up with these lines right here so that I know it's not lined up. That means my stitch isn't gonna be straight. If I'm sewing and I make sure that everything is even down here, that means my stitch will be perfectly straight. And if you've never used a sewing machine before, don't panic. It's one of the easiest things that you can learn how to do. You can learn it in an afternoon. You can learn it in five minutes because I made a video on it already. You can go check it out in the card. All right, so let's make this straight stitch. We are starting our stitch 
on this seam right here. This is gonna be the seam that's on the very bottom of our sleeve. This is what rubs up against our armpit because what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off our stitch with a back stitch. And if we start off um, on our armpit right here, we're gonna be able to hide it. Nobody's gonna see it. You can start it up here if you want to, but you're gonna see a little, a little hump of a uh, of thread right there if you were to do that. So it's just a lot easier to do it back here. That way nobody will ever know except for you and me. And take your time if you need to. Straight stitches are easy, but don't just go flying through it if you don't, uh, if you don't need to. Just take your time. So here's what we got going on right now. Um, I can't pull this, oh there it goes. I can't really pull this out very easily. Sometimes your fabric can get caught down there in your feed dogs. Those are the things that move forward. See those little teeth looking thing down there? Those teeth looking things down there? Um, your fabric can get caught in there and you can see all this extra thread that's being pulled out. For instance, see, I lost my uh, my thread up top there. So I'm just gonna have to re-thread this really quick. It happens, not a big deal at all. I'm glad that it happened right now because it might happen to you and you'll be like, wait, what? His tutorials are always so flawless and they go so well. Well, no, mistakes happen. Oh, okay, check this out. So I have a snag. That's why I lost my thread just now. So spools of thread will come with a little slit on it just like that. It ended up when it spins like that, it got caught right there so it ended up snapping my thread and making things get all bunched up down here so we're just going to take that off and an easy way to avoid that is to just flip it around so now the, the little notch the little slit is on this side so that things can just move smoothly now tread very carefully with what i'm about to show you because it is a perfect example of trying to fix something and it's very possible to fix but in the process of trying to fix that thing you make it you make the problem a little bit worse. Okay, we are re-threaded and we are ready to rock and roll. But check this out, look, see that angle right there? See how it's not straight? Again, that's an easy way to make sure that we have a straight stitch. So I'm gonna, boop, move that over just a little bit there. Okay, perfect, eh, a little bit more, hang on. Now, again, go slow, just take your time. It's just a straight stitch, it's really easy to do, but take your time. I missed this pin back here, but that's okay, it's not a big deal and it slid off just a smidgen. So you're gonna lose your stitch tension when you raise your presser foot, but that's okay. We just wanna eh, raise it just a bit. Okay, perfect. Watch my seam guide. That's how you're gonna be able to make sure and tell that this stitch is straight. I've already had a couple issues, but that's cause I'm not paying attention as much as I should. So I'm gonna make sure to pay better attention. There we go, much better. Take your time, go slow. The reason why you see me pulling out some of these pins, but then leaving some of the other ones like earlier on, um, I didn't put them all as uniform as I should have on the very edge or even right up here. But as long as I just make sure to look here and not at my needle while I'm doing this, it's gonna be straight. See, do you see that? See how I'm getting to the underside now and these lines are gonna be perfectly lined up? That's the power and the magic of your seam guide. It's, oh, it's amazing. I wish more people talked about why this is important and what it is and how it can actually help you sew in a straight line. It's, man, that would've saved me a lot of time and headaches in the beginning. Boom, okay, there we go. Now we're gonna back stitch it in. Presto. So this is what we got. We have a straight stitch on here that looks exactly like it would when it came from the store because our stitch is 2.5 millimeters in length. Now I kind of switched up on you a little bit. See how the shirt is see-through? You can see how that is one full inch, but whoa SD, your stitch, it's all the way down here. It's not up here. Well, I kind of switched it up mid tutorial. Um, you don't necessarily have to follow my lead or follow my steps, but what I wanted to do is I wanted to give it kind of a more sleeker appearance. So I moved the stitch down by about a quarter of an inch instead of having it up here, because when I was looking at my original shirt, which I'll show you in a second, it just looked kind of bulky. Since my stitch is down here, it just makes the sleeve look a little bit smaller and just gives it a, just a sleeker appearance. This has actually become one of my favorite shirts to wear this summer. You know, it's a really good idea. Taking a pair of Chino pants that match the shirt perfectly and let's, uh, let's turn those into some shorts. Shall we? Yeah, let's do that. It's in the end card. I'll see you on the other side. SD out. See ya.